Brazil and Power, New Frontiers and Opportunities. I am Rafael Hertzberg, partner at Interact Limited, an energy consulting company based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Today, the agenda will cover the Brazilian crisis, about the country's power sector, the most important challenges, power price trends, opportunities, emblematic cases, and how to do it. There are three most important factors associated with the ongoing crisis. Negative GPD since 2015, about 10% unemployment, and about a 10% per year inflation. The country is the world's seventh with a $2.3 trillion GPD, 200 million people, and the country size is slightly larger than the continental USA. And the per capita income is about $12,000 per year. The big numbers about the Brazilian power sector is shown here. The power consumption is 70 gigawatt firm throughout the year. It's about a $50 billion a year business. And our matrix is 75% hydro and most of the balance is thermal. 70% of the market is basically regulated and the balance is deregulated. 35% of the power consumption is originated by the residential sector, 24% from the industrial sector, 22% from the commercial sector, and then the balance is uh, by the public sector, by the rural sector, and a few others. What are the most important challenges these days in Brazil? This picture tells a little bit about the answer. The ongoing marginal cost of operations, and that is a piece of information published by the independent system operator, it's a very low value of 30 reais per megawatt hour. And this number drives the spot power prices. Then we have deregulated short term, and by that I mean the next quarter, it's the price is around 60 reais per megawatt hour and then we have deregulated long term which is currently offered at 120 reais per megawatt hour from 2017 to 2020 and then uh, we calculate the marginal cost of expansion which is basically the long uh, long term power prices and uh, it's a value that is consistent with what the investors would require to keep building new power plants for future delivery. And uh, it means that right now the deregulated power prices are well below the marginal cost of expansion. And also, it should be said, that the regulated rates are somewhere 15% below the marginal cost of expansion. If it's about reducing the power bill, then there are four different costs to be considered. The first one is the commodity cost. If it's a regulated energy user, there is not too much to be done because the rates are published and that's it. If it's a deregulated energy user, it's about negotiating a very attractive deal for that specific case. And then the second point is taxes. And actually, there is not, not much to do when it comes to taxes because it's out of the control of the energy user. And here in Brazil, uh, it's a 30% VAT type tax on top of the total bill. And then there, there is the wire fees. This is usually somewhere around 90 
the realized per megawatt hour and this value is used to subsidize federal sponsored programs in the energy arena and uh, for energy efficiency or power for the poor people and and finally the last item is the capacity fees uh, this is basically the most important uh, utility companies revenue and uh, in rough numbers uh, the utility companies charge something like 60 reais per megawatt hour for offering the capacity which is associated with the infrastructure that is made available by these companies to connect the end users to the public grid. What are the power price trends then? In the long term, in my opinion, it's about the marginal cost of expansion. And because of this, it is reasonable to say that we will keep on with podium power prices if we compare with other countries around the globe. What are then the opportunities? I see three areas. The first one being energy saving activities. And it is basically because each avoided megawatt hour is very valuable if we consider the future scenario. The second one is on-site power projects because they will make a lot of sense if the comparison is the power from the grid. And the third is other energy sources such as natural gas, biomass, etc. This was a very interesting case presented at PowerGen in the US in the 90s and uh, it shows a leading company in the packaging business in Brazil that hired Interact to see where the opportunities were for cost reductions. And after talking to the upper management and visiting the plant and talking to the technical guys, uh, it was clear to me that this company was facing huge losses because of the 50 hour per year of unplanned interruptions. So my idea then was building a high voltage substation and a connecting transmission line so to make sure that the company would be connected at 138 kV because the reliability is a lot better at that voltage level. And actually, they got excellent results because power interruptions were a small fraction of what they used to have. And not only that, the, the new rates at higher voltage offered a very quick payback for the $2 million investment. This is another very interesting and emblematic case that was also presented at PowerGen a, a few years ago and it's about a leading Canadian company specialized in training pilots and uh, these guys have two uh, sites in Brazil and uh, one of them was showing a 60 hour per year of unplanned interruptions and this was hurting the business because the pilots were not really happy because when there was an interruption they had to reschedule their session and so the solution was developing a biodiesel genset to operate during the on-peak hours to displace the local utility company and save power bill costs and amortize the capital expenditure associated with the project. And of course, um, uh, the very good side effect of this solution is having the genset for emergencies when there is, when there is or there was a power interruption. This case is about a pharmaceutical company by the name of Sanofi, previously known here in Brazil as Aventis and uh, this was published 
by Energy Central, a major energy uh, portal in the US. And the bottom line was that the solution for this company to reduce power costs was migrating this company from the regulated business environment to the deregulated business environment. And this uh, was very cost effective, 31% cost reduction in the monthly power bill. This is a very emblematic case also. It was uh, presented at FIESP, the Industrial Federation of the State of Sao Paulo. And it tells a story about a company, La Lecla, a packaging company also, and that hired Interact to reduce power costs. And our works back then in the 90s focused on energy efficiency. So the four most important uh, actions were installing adjustable speed drives to control their large electric motors, replace infrared heating processes by ultraviolet, implement demand controls to increase the load factor of the company, and um, install capacitors to improve the power factor and eliminate the penalties that they were paying on a monthly basis. The most important question, perhaps, is how to do it, how to achieve excellent results. My answer for that is four points. The first one is basically understanding very well the boundary business conditions that, are, that must be associated to all solutions that will be conceived. The second one is making sure that we as consultants understand the technical, financial and management needs of that specific client. And then the third step is gathering the proper information, analyzing this information, crafting options that might do the job and finally um, help the client throughout the decision-making process. Once that is done, make it happen. Thank you very much for watching this video and here goes my contact information. I am looking forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye now.